a full stock kit gun and and I put it together and <laughs> the first time I went to shoot it I didn't want to shoot it so I got my little brother to shoot it. <laughs> Who do we have here? What's your name and age? My name is Dennis Hemperley, and, and my age is 72. Where were you born and raised, Dennis? I was born and raised in uh, Middletown, Pennsylvania. What got you started into muzzleloading? Vess Parker. Oh yeah? From Davy Crockett films? In the... From Davy Crockett on television. Right. Mm -hmm. So why did you start shooting muzzleloading? Uh, for the challenge, for the, the historic part of it, for the challenge of shooting it. Uh huh. So when did you join Standing Stone? I guess you're not a member, but when did you start shooting up here? Oh, about five years ago. Okay. How'd you hear about it? Uh, my buddy, uh, he came up here. Uh, Charlie, he came up here, and then I, I came up with him. Okay. So what would you say your favorite aspect of muzzle loading is? The competition. Yeah. You're competitive. Yeah. You don't come across so. Oh no, no, I that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the idea. Okay. <laughs> What's your favorite maker or style of a muzzle loader? Um Beck. Yeah. Beck out of Lancaster County is my favorite. But you have all kinds of different I mean you got Tennessees, you got yeah, all I kinds all, of them. I have all kinds of different. Do you have several Becks then, or just one? No, just one Beck. But then, then I have a Tennessee Poor Boy, and and uh, I have a Jaeger. Okay. What's your favorite caliber, all around? Like, what's your favorite? Fifty. Fifty. Yeah. Why is that? Well, it gives you it yeah, gives you the yeah. best range. And, Thank you. Uh, it's just a good all around caliber. Okay. What's the best advice you can give to a new shooter? Uh, don't make cleaning your gun such a, a trial that you don't shoot it because you don't want to clean it. Okay. A gun, a gun doesn't have to be spick and span for, for if you're going to shoot it uh, once a month or even uh, a little more than that. Now, if you're going to put it away for the whole season, then it has to be cleaned really well and oiled. But just in between matches... Anyway, you don't I have to make it so much of a chore that you don't want to shoot yeah. it. So you just like it's like today, you shot. You're just gonna clean it lightly and put it away, and you'll you're then you can shoot tomorrow. No, I'll, I won't clean it till tomorrow evening. Oh, you won't even clean it tonight. No, no. Okay. No, you don't have to do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what? I know you've killed two bear in Idaho with the flintlock. Uh, yeah. So what all what all other types of hunting have you done? You've been other other places other than Idaho, or? Yeah, I was I was to uh, uh, Colorado, Wyoming, Canada. I went to Canada a couple of times. Okay. So what all what all species besides stuff here in Pennsylvania have you killed? Just the black bear. Okay. Black bear. Yeah. But like Colorado, you were hunting. Yeah, I didn't get nothing there. Oh, okay. You're elk hunting, or? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What were you doing in Canada with a flintlock? Bear hunting. Oh, okay. Bear hunting. You didn't get any up there? No, I met a guy. I met a guy when I was up bear hunting one time, and he saw my flintlock, and he asked me if I'd build him one. And I said, I said, yeah, I'd build him one. So I, he said that if I build him the flintlock, he'll uh, take me and two of my mates on a moose hunting trip. So I called two of my buddies up, and they bought the parts for the gun, and I built the gun, and we went up, we went up to Canada, and uh, the guy took us on a moose hunt. Nice. And it, it was fun. We didn't get any moose, but it was, it was fun. It's fun to trade uh, work for work, or you know, yeah. something like other than income. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Tell us about, tell us a deer story. Tell us a good old muzzleloading deer story. 
<laughs> How about the bucket you shot at like six times? Oh no, that was a doe. Oh. <laughs> me, and Bobby, me and Bobby, we backpacked in and uh, we had this camp set up in the hollow. And uh, we were, it was lunchtime and we were making tea and here come three deer running along the hillside down the, <laughs> down the hillside. And Bobby said, Bobby said, he come up and back me. I was leaning against the tree looking, looking at these deer and Bobby said, the one in the front is the big one. He said, the one in the front is a lot bigger than the, than the other two. Well, I wanted the little one. I didn't want the big one. I wanted the tender one. So, so I lined up on the on the little one and shot it. And Bobby said, "No, no, you shot the wrong deer." <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We had some adventures. Let me tell you. How many deer do you think you killed with the flint? Fifty. Yeah. Mostly late season, or do you yeah. carry you carry it in the rifle season, yeah, right? I, I, I don't have anything but flint rock. Yeah. When did that transition occur? Because you probably started with the center fire, right? Yeah. When I, I first started with a, a, a model ninety nine Savage. Savage. Yep. I had that. That was a good gun. What three hundred Savage? Three oh eight. They changed. Three oh eight. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I killed. Uh, I don't know. Probably four deer with that, and then then I started hunting with a muzzleloader. And after I started hunting with a muzzleloader, I seventies or eighties or when was that? Seventies. Okay. Yeah. And that was back when you could only shoot one deer a year. Uh huh. Yeah. And what what late seventies they started the late plea late season, mm -hmm. so you've always done that then yeah. if you had a tag. Yeah, yeah. If I had a tag, totally. Yeah. You say, how was this with your first gun? Well, when I first started, I didn't know anybody that, that shot flintlock. I didn't know anybody that had a, had a black powder gun or anything. And uh, uh, I just bought a book that said how to do it, and I bought a kit gun, a, a um, Nurek Arms Minuteman. It was a full stock kit gun, and, and I put it together. And, the first time I went to shoot it, I didn't want to shoot it, so I got my little brother to shoot it. <laughs> After he shoot it, I knew it wasn't going to blow up. But I, I, <laughs> nice guy, Dennis. <laughs> and I shot it. Uh, and, uh, well, then I was, I went into a gun, uh, a gun store, and they had a pamphlet uh, hanging there about a shooting match. That was over in York, Pla York County. It okay. was called York County Long Rifles. Was the place it was, and I went over there and shot, and I won the match. The beginner they had a beginners match, and I won the beginners match. They gave me a little one of those uh, tankers, and it had has engraved on it beginners match 1970. I don't know 70. That was probably 75. 1975. And uh, I still have that on my mantle. Yeah, so, what you would? How old would you have been back then? Twenty what, something. Twenty something. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, then I started. I started shooting with those guys and going over for the work work parties. York Valley muzzle loaders was the top of the top. They were they were the guys, the very best shots in the in in the state. You know. Uh, and I went over and helped them with work parties, and then they invited me to, to join, and I was so proud that they, they invited me to join because, I mean, them guys, they, they, they would shoot matches like animal targets and then only shoot at the head, you know, to, for, for score. They were, just, they were just that good. They were, all of them were really, really excellent shots. And the idea that they wanted me to be Part of their organization, no. Yeah, that's cool. Bobby was a member. Bobby, when I first started shooting with him, and he could hit the he could hit the ears off a tick at a hundred yards. I started in '71, and I think I started '72 uh, is when I went up there. Yeah. What made you get into the rendezvous? Well, I, I just didn't want to drive back and forth. Uh, a lot of times, a lot of times, uh, I'd I'd drink a little more than what I should, so I didn't want to. That's the nice thing about the rendezvous is you don't have your key, so you don't you can't drive. So yeah, yeah. You know, that, that was the that was good. I'm kind of a 
I'm kind of a, a different kind of drinker. I'm a, a binge drinker. I don't drink for months and months and then at the rendezvous I get my guitar out and play my guitar and <laughs> and <laughs> get kind of <laughs> get kind of shit face. <laughs> show us your camp. I'm not eating that shit, are you? So you've been doing this rendezvous and primitive camping for years. Oh, years and years and years. <laughs> well, since the 70s. Right. The, the medium of the late 70s. Here's my tent. Okay. Not, not much going on in there. You got a little lantern. What's in your, what's your box got? What do you have in there? That's my dry goods like bread and okay. stuff like that. But it's in a box that's strong enough so that people can sit on it if you want somebody to sit on it. Oh, okay, gotcha. And your gun's put away in your truck and yeah, stuff. I okay. Well, I just want to thank Dennis for doing the interview. Um, I'm glad he he was willing to talk. And hopefully you guys enjoyed his, uh, his stories and his enthusiasm. He's a great guy to shoot with. And... Uh, We'll see you on the next interview. Thanks for watching.